thanks for joining this webinar. As you're probably aware, JBL manufacture a wide range of loudspeaker products that can be used to deliver clear and intelligible messages in airports. One thing I would like to say is if you require any further information or design support for any of the products that we talk about today, then please contact your local application engineering team. JBL has a great team of application engineers located around the world in our regional offices, and I would encourage you to make use of them. So let's start off by talking about what an airport is. Well, an airport can vary in size from a small landing strip, like you see here on the left, to a large international hub, like you see on the right. Many of these large hubs can handle anywhere between 60 million and 100 million passengers a year. These hubs are in fact small cities in their own right. The point here is that every airport is unique and each project will have its own unique design goals and challenges. So let's get back to basics for a moment. What's the purpose of a public address system? Well, the purpose of a PA system is to deliver a message. Sounds simple, right? But in order for that message to be effective, the message must be clear and easy to understand. So it's not just the spaces that increase in size as you move from small to large airports. The challenges for the sound system and designer also increase. Modern, architect it, modern architecture often includes highly reflective surfaces, such as glass and hard floors. These large room volumes also have high reverberation times, which are a challenge for the sound system designer. Background noise also becomes more of a consideration. So this is what the purpose of a sound system is all about. Well, hang on, this sentence doesn't really make sense, does it? And that's the whole point here, is that you wouldn't send an email with half the words missing. It would be unprofessional, you just wouldn't do it. So why would you accept a public address system that is unable to, deli to deliver clear messages? You want to clearly communicate with passengers. So what we're saying here is the key thing is making your message understood. It sounds simple, but that's what it's all about. And loudspeaker choice is a key factor here. JBL manufacture a wide range of loudspeakers that can be used by sound designers and consultants to deliver clear messages to passengers. JBL have solutions to suit various applications, ceiling heights, styles of architecture, and room acoustics. So let's start off by looking at ceiling loudspeakers. For those of you who know our portfolio well, you'll know we have a very wide range of ceiling loudspeakers at various value points to suit every application. Next, let's look at pendant loudspeakers. For areas where you have no ceiling or the ceiling may be too high for ceiling loudspeakers to be effective, then pendants are a really good option. Our surface mount range prov provide great solutions for retail and restaurant areas in airports, as well as infills for other solutions. And moving on, we also have a large range of outdoor loudspeakers. Our all-weather loudspeakers are ideal for curbside and other outdoor applications. In addition to the products you see here, JBL have a really wide range of IP-rated loudspeakers suitable for outdoor use. And last but, not le last but not least is our range of column loudspeakers. JBL has a really great portfolio of column loudspeakers, and we'll talk a little bit more about this now. So what happens in these really large reverberant spaces, you know, when we get to some of these larger airports? Well, what you'll find is acoustically, you know, you have a loudspeaker here on the left, um, our listener here on the right, and there's a whole mix of things going on. You have direct sound traveling from the loudspeaker directly to the listener. That's the thing we want to maximize for speech intelligibility. You have a lot of reflected sound or reverberation, energy that's bounced around the room, and then you have background noise. And it's these two factors, reflected sound, you know, the reverberation and the background noise that are really key to speech intelligibility. We really need to minimize um, uh, the, the ratio of direct sound to reverberant sound as much as possible and the signal to, and maximize the signal to noise ratio as much as possible. So the space you see here on the right is a concrete roof, the exterior walls are glass and the floor is hard tiles. These are all highly reflective surfaces for sound, which makes delivering a clear message really difficult. It's spaces like these that column loudspeakers can often provide a good solution, both acoustically and practically. From a practical perspective, you know, we can see from this photo here 
that there is no place to mount a ceiling speaker or a pendant solution. Equally, surface mount speakers wouldn't work because of the large throw distances involved uh, from the mounting positions. So, column speakers can provide the throw and directivity control required in this example. They also fit well into the architecture of the space. Let's take a moment to look at some of these column loudspeakers, or what we refer to as directivity controlled arrays. JBL has an incredibly strong portfolio of both passive and active line arrays. Though the end goal is similar, the CBT and Intellivox ranges differ in the technology they use to control the vertical directivity. The CBT uses passive components and is powered by conventional amplifiers, whereas the Intellivox is an active unit with built-in DSP and amplification. Both products are truly innovative. So what does passive and active mean? Well, CBT technology utilizes a ladder of passive components to mimic the performance of a digital delay. Whereas Intellivox, with its built-in amplification in DSP, makes use of JBL's advanced DDS beam shaping algorithms, which allow users to shape the vertical directivity. Both CBT and Intellivox provide excellent vertical directivity control, which allow you to aim the sound where you want it, the listener, therefore maximizing speech intelligibility. So this slide shows you know, the breadth of the portfolio we have both in CBT and Intellivox products. And there are over 20 products available, you know, ranging from the shortest CBT50 to the longest Intellivox DSX500. So JBL truly has an amazing portfolio of directivity controlled arrays which give you, the designer, a really wide palette of products to work with. So just taking a couple of moments to look at a couple of the CBT units in more detail. Here we've chosen the CBT100. This unit is designed primarily for speech and background music. The unit is 100 centimeters tall, hence the name 100, has 16 two inch full range drivers, 325 watts AES power handling, frequency range, of 80 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And importantly, it has a switchable vertical coverage. So there's actually a switch on the side of the unit that you can turn to switch between a 20 degree or a 40 degree vertical coverage. The color image that you see here is from the CBT calculator, which is a great tool when working with CBT systems. And it's free and available to download from the JBL website. Next, we'll just pick another product from the CBT range. This example is the CBT-70J, J because the J shape of the array that you see here. This model has larger drivers than the CBT-100 that we saw previously, and it's two-way. So this product has a higher power handling and can produce higher quality music reproduction. The unit is 70 centimeters tall, has four five and a quarter low frequency drivers, 16 HF drivers, which are arranged on this J shape, as you can see, and we have 500 watt AES power handling. Frequency ranges from 60, to 60 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Again, the unit has switchable coverage, so we can go from a narrow to a broad setting, so from 25 to 45 degrees vertical coverage. And it's worth noting this J shaping on the uh, dome tweezers really helps the near field coverage here as well. So if you do have areas where you have listeners very close to the array, then you know, the J shaping will help. So moving on from CBT, let's look at Intellivox. The Intellivox range goes from 115 centimeters in length right up to five meters. The five meter model can throw 50 to 70 meters in distance. So we'll pick one of the um, kind of mid-length units here, which is the DSX 280 HD, one of the mo more commonly used Intellivox models. So let's look at what it's actually made up of. Well, at the top of the array, we have an array of four inch drivers. These drivers, underneath these four inch drivers, we then have a HF section with a small array of HF drivers. Then at the bottom is a multi-channel amplifier. So in the case of this unit, a 16 channel amp and DSP. This combination of drivers and electronics allows us to control the vertical dispersion of the array. The horizontal dispersion of the array is fixed. Intellivox has a very narrow vertical opening angle, which allows us to aim the sound where you need it, at the passengers, the listeners. What you see here is a vertical cross section through the Intellivox array. The acoustic center is marked by a small blue line. 
and this is the lowest driver in the Intellivox. The thin black line is the listener height. You can see that Intellivox steers the sound downwards onto the audience, aiming the sound where you want it and reducing reflections. The next image shows a plan view, so we are now looking from the top down. What you see here is that the Intellivox has a very wide horizontal dispersion. This means that a single Intellivox is capable of covering, covering a very large surface area. So it's great for large check-in halls, for example. In addition, the sound pressure level coverage is very even. Even though this unit is throwing 70 meters, then there is very little difference in SPL from the nearest to the furthest listener. For those of you wishing to learn more about Intellivox, then visit the JBL YouTube channel to watch the learning session delivered recently by Keith Caggiano. So on this next slide, there's a couple of images here of Intellivox installed in airports. The example on the left is a large check-in hall. Highlighted in red are two five-meter Intellivox units. These two units cover the entire area between these check-in desks. It's worth noting that on the opposite side of the small light green buildings where the Intellivox are mounted, there are actually CBTs, which are used to cover the queuing lanes for security. So whilst we're talking about these different uh, loudspeaker types and technology, you know, quite often you'll see them mixed, even in the same area as an airport space. It really is just finding the best solution for that particular project. The other examples you see here include one example on the top right, where an Intellivox has been recessed into a column. It's important to note that when Intellivox are recessed, then they can be serviced in situ as all the parts are accessible from the front of the unit. In the previous slides, the concept of intelligibility was introduced. Let's take a couple of minutes to look at intelligibility in a little more detail. So how can we define intelligibility? What is it? Well, intelligibility is a, mat is a measure of how comprehensible speech is in given conditions. So one of those conditions could be the background noise in the room. I'm sure that we've all tried to have a conversation with someone in a noisy restaurant and discovered that moving closer to the listener will help, you, will help them understand what you're saying. Now let's talk about speech transmission index, or STI. So STI is the objective measure of speech intelligibility that is commonly used for public address systems. STI takes into account both the effects of reverberation and background noise. A minimum STI of 0.5 is often required for public spaces, such as airports. When designing a system, it's important to ensure that the STI values meet the specification and any applicable local standards. You can actually predict STI up front. For simple spaces, you can use the statistical engine inside JBL DDA. For more complex spaces, then you need to think about ray tracing in Isora, Catacoustic, or Odeon. You can measure STI using handheld devices or computer-based software solutions. You may also see steeper STI PA referred to in some publications and on some handheld devices. Steeper was introduced in the early 2000s and has a simplified measurement signal, which made it possible to make STI measurements on handheld meters for the very first time. Okay, so we've talked about what STI is, how we can measure it. Um, I think one thing I should emphasize from the previous slide is, it, is it, the scale actually does go from, um, from zero to one, one being excellent, zero being unacceptable. And generally speaking, you know, we mentioned this 0.5 region previously as being above 0.5 as being acceptable for a public address system in a large public space. Depending on the acoustics, you can often get you know, a better performance than that. Okay, so moving on, let's look at some of the factors that influence speech intelligibility. So first up is the intelligibility of the original signal. So for live announcements, then talker proficiency is key. Microphone technique plays a really important part as well. So training public address system users on microphone technique can have long-term benefits for the intelligibility of live announcements. The next point to consider is direct to reverberant ratio. So this is the sound that's coming to you directly from the loudspeaker 
this is the, sound, the reverberant sound, so the sound that's bounced all around the room, off the wall, off the ceiling, off the floors, etc. So, how can we improve director reverberant ratio? Well, you can achieve this in a number of ways. You know, one approach would be to add acoustic absorption to the room. That's obviously something as sound system designers that we cannot control. Um, but you know, the acoustic designer for the building might choose to do so to help the performance of the sound system. The next thing you could do is design, as a sound system designer especially, is to design with more directional loudspeakers. These have a narrower dispersion pattern and help um, with a direct re reverberant ratio because we're not creating as many reflections. We're not exciting as many of those surfaces. So the other thing you could do is move the loudspeakers closer to the listeners. So these are all techniques that could improve the direct re reverberant ratio. Next up is signal to noise ratio. Ideally, you want your PA system to have a signal to noise ratio of around 12 to 15 dB. This really help, helps improve speech intelligibility. Although this isn't possible sometimes in some very high noise environments. However, in airports then, you know, we're not usually dealing with too high a background noise level. When I talk about noise, um, what I'm talking about is any kind of background noise really. That could be noise from the air conditioning system. It can be noise from the occupants, so the actual people inside the building, etc. cetera. Um, the signal being the announcement that you actually want to broadcast. Um, and the final two points you see here, which is bandwidth to the signal path and SPL distribution. So if you're using high quality pro audio products, then bandwidth really shouldn't be an issue. So we shouldn't have an issue with bandwidth affecting speech intelligibility. Although if you are using pre-recorded announcements, I would encourage you to make sure that they are professionally recorded you know, with a wide bandwidth. Likewise, if your system has enough headroom and you're using good quality components, then you're unlikely to experience distortion. Final point then on intelligibility is about non-native listeners. So don't forget that in airports, many passengers may be listening to announcements being made in their second or third language. Airports often solve this problem by using automated multilingual announcements. However, you can't always announce in every single language. So, you know, there are always going to be people listening in second or third language. Research has shown that for non-native listeners, then SDI does need to be higher. Obviously, this is a very short whistle-stop tour around the subject of intelligibility, um, and I will be hosting a more detailed webinar on intelligibility on May the 9th. So if you'd like to learn more, then please join me then. Okay, so we've looked at some of the loudspeaker solutions available from JBL. We've talked about the importance of speech intelligibility as well. Now let's look at an example airport project. Before we start looking at the example project itself, then I think there are some things we need to consider. So before you start designing your PA system, it's important to have a good understanding of the project. Some of the factors you need to consider include the specification, you know, fairly logical one is you need to ensure the system is designed to meet the spec. You know, the spec will normally state things like SPL requirements, coverage, signal to noise ratio, STI requirements, etc. The next thing to consider is standards. You need to ensure that the system is designed to meet the applicable local standards. It's worth noting that standards do vary from country to country, so please consult your local standards or code. You know, there is no one size fits all solution here. Another consideration here is whether the system is public address only or whether it's public address, combined public address and voice alarm. So if your system is an emergency sound system, what I would call a public address and voice alarm system, then there may be many more standards and code of practice that you need to consider. The final point here on this slide is architectural integration. Before you start designing a system, it's important to understand the architecture of the space and what solutions will and won't be acceptable to the architect, interior designer, and the other stakeholders. Right, so I've done my research, I've got all that in information together in my head and on paper. So how do I now approach my loudspeaker choice? So let's look at some of the factors influencing loudspeaker choice. So 
In my JBL bag here, I've got my entire portfolio of JBL loudspeakers. And let's think about some of the factors that will influence the choice of loudspeaker. So first of all, is the loudspeaker specification? You know, is my system going to be low or high impedance? That will dictate, you know, which type of loudspeaker I'm choosing. What sound pressure level do I need to achieve? What frequency response is required to meet the spec? And finally, you know, things like directivity. Directivity is really important because that's going to determine your coverage and also impact the SDI, which we spoke about earlier. Again, standards come into consideration again here. You know, what standards do, do my loudspeakers need to meet to meet the local codes and requirements? You know, for example, they might need to meet EN 5424. Subjective quality. I guess this is an interesting one. And I think it's important to have a good handle on what the expectation is for each space. The expectation for an executive lounge or retail space, for example, would typically be higher than that for a back of house area. And finally, again, architecture of the space. What's practical? You know, if there's no ceiling, you can't put a ceiling loudspeaker in. Also think about what fits the look and feel and quality of the space. And it's also worth noting that many JBL products are available in black or white as standard, and some, such as Intellivox, also have custom color options. Right, now we've got all that in our head, let's move on to our airport example. So this airport's actually being built in SketchUp and then imported into the JBL DDA 3D simulation software. So here's our example project, and we're going to spend some time looking at the airport and thinking about solutions for some of the spaces. It's worth noting that each airport will have its own unique architecture, acoustics, and customer requirements. These examples are provided to stimulate ideas and highlight some of the JBL products that you might consider in your design. But remember, each project's going to be unique, and you have to take each one on that merit, on its own merits. So the first area we'll look at is a typical pier with a number of retail outlets, seating areas, and gates. So for this area, we're going to consider some ceiling loudspeaker solutions. So we've started here by looking at a number of possible options from the small format range of ceiling loudspeakers from JBL. Each product has its own unique specification and features. As we move from left to right, then we see an improvement in subjective audio quality. The CSS 15 that you see on the left will be a good choice for basic paging, whilst the Control 47 LP on the right combines outstanding pattern control and consistent coverage with superior sonic performance. Whilst we're on the subject of the Control 47 LP, you may have noticed the slotted plate covering the woofer on the previous slide. This slotted plate acts as a waveguide for the tweeter and an RBI for the woofer. So what's an RBI, some of you might be asking. Well, RBI stands for Radiation Boundary Integrator. And this is a technology that's actually come from our performance touring line arrays and then been brought into our control contractor series here in the Control 40. So the woofer actually pro uh, projects through the apertures that you see in the tweeter waveguide. So you can see these slots cut um, in front of the woofer. And the waveguide and apertures are designed with a specific size, shape, and diameter to provide consistent broadband coverage over a very wide area. If any of you are ever lucky enough to visit Los Angeles, then please try and schedule a trip to our Northridge Experience Center, where you can hear many of these products, products that we speak about today. We also have experience, experience centers near London, Shanghai, and Singapore. So I'd encourage you to contact your local Harman office for more information. Okay, so back to our project, our pier and our gates. On this occasion, we've chosen the product that was in the middle there, which was the JBL Control 16 CT. So the Control 16 CT is a ceiling loudspeaker. It has a six and a half inch um, low frequency driver, three quarter inch soft dome tweeter, giving you a nice uh, high frequency response. It has an integrated back can, which means it's very easy and quick to mount, and has dual conduit and cable clamps. The unit can work in both low impedance or high impedance mode, so it can work with 70 or 100 volt line systems. It's typically 50 watts um, at an 8 ohm nominal setting, 
and then there are a range of taps for both 70 and 100 volt operation. The unit has a frequency response of 62 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a wide 110 degree coverage. The unit boasts a high sensitivity of 91 dB, which means we get a rated max SPL of 108 dB at one meters. The unit is available in white or black as standard. And you know, for those of you in Europe, then if you require the unit to meet EM5424, then there is an EM5424 version available. So choosing your loudspeaker grid. If you need help cho choosing your loudspeaker grid, then you can use the JBL distributed system design software. For our project, we entered the ceiling height and room dimensions into the software. And the software recommended a 4.7 meter grid. In our example, we're actually gonna use a five meter grid. The JBL distributed system design software also gives you an indication of the maximum SBL and variation in SBL. On screen now is a 3D model showing the control 16s in a five meter grid. As you saw on the previous slide, the JBL distributed system design software calculated the maximum continuous SPL as around 91 dB with a 15 watt tap. On this project, we expect the background noise levels at the gates to be between 60 and 75 dB, depending on the time of day. So we, we will achieve a signal to noise ratio of a healthy 12 dB in all scenarios. So while we're looking at this pier and these gates, let's talk about zoning for a minute. So here highlighted in red could be the example um, zone for a gate. So zoning on this pier will largely depend on how the customer wants to operate. If the zones haven't already been defined up front by the consultant, then the system designer will need to define the zones in coordination with the client and the consultant. The, cli the client may only want um, gate announcements to go to the local area, as you see here highlighted in red, or they may choose to announce to a wider area to adjacent zones, uh, adjacent gates rather, or the whole pier. All of these factors will impact zoning and how you define your loudspeaker circuits. I feel now would also be a good time to mention game before feedback. You need to consider that there will be microphones at the gate counters and air bridges to make live announcements. You may wish to tap the speakers near these areas lower, not to place loudspeakers here, or to place them on independent circuits so you can maximize game before feedback. Okay, so now we've selected that zone. We're now looking at what the SPL distribution um, will look like. So this is actually a plot from um, JBL's DDA software. So this is a direct SPL plot with a male speech input. So what you can see over here is that we have an SPL of around 83 dB. And DDA also tells us that the available headroom is approximately 10 to 12 dB. This aligns really well with the output we saw from the JBL distributed system design software earlier. It's worth noting, of course, that total SPL will be higher than what you see here, as you will then have the addition of the reverberant field. Next, let's look at an all call that addresses the whole peer. Again, you should discuss which, annou which announcements go to which zones or areas with the client and consultants when defining your system functionality. This will impact your cabling strategy and your loudspeaker circuits. Another important consideration when, de when deciding upon zones is whether your system is a public address system only or whether it's a combined public address voice alarm system, so an emergency sound system as well. If it's a combined system, then you will need to coordinate the zoning of the PAVA si system with the zoning of the fire alarm system. Okay, so back to the all call for this peer. The plot on screen now shows a direct SPL output from DDA with a male speech input. SPL is around 84 dB with a headroom of approximately 10 to 12 dB. If you want to learn more about DDA, then there was a recent JBL learning session which is now on the YouTube channel. And there are also some other DDA sessions planned in coming weeks. So please keep an eye out for those. So on screen now is um, 
an STR, STI value that's statistically calculated from DDA. So this is one of the things that DDA is capable of doing. Um, so you can calculate the, the STI in DDA by inputting the room volume, our tea time, and background noise into the software, and then generating an STI value. It's important to note that these values are only for this specific example project and with the settings in DDA. As I said earlier, remember every project is unique. So you have to go through this project um, process for each individual project and each individual area within a project. Also, you know, again, I mentioned ray tracing earlier. If this is a complex space, then you know, statistical um, calculation is not gonna cut it. So you will need to think about ray tracing. You can, of course, do this in some of the other commercially available packages, uh, such as Ezora, CAT, or Odium. Okay, so I think that's, uh, that concludes our discussion about the peer and gate area. So next we'll move on to an example check-in hall. So this space actually has a much higher ceiling, a much higher volume, and a much higher reverberation time than the previous example we looked at. So it'll provide a few more challenges for the sound system designer. So for this area, we've chosen IntelliVox products. In fact, as you see here on the right, there's a mix of IntelliVox DSX 500s, which are a five meter array, and DSX 180s, which are 1.8 meter array. As I said a moment ago, this area has a larger volume and higher reverberation time, which make IntelliVox's beam shaping technology the perfect solution for this type of area, as the narrow vertical dispersion means that you can maximize the direct to reverberant ratio therefore improving speech intelligibility. So just to highlight which these products um, on this plot are 500s and which are 180s. So here you can see highlighted are the IntelliVox DSX 500s, which is a five meter array. You may wonder why we didn't use five meter arrays all the way along that, that line there. Um, the reason being, of course, is that would get quite expensive from a budgetary point of view. IntelliVox are very wide. So what we can actually do is use the 500s to cover the bulk of the area and then use the 180s to be more of an infill. So um, providing HF coverage in that, uh, you know, kind of zero to 15 to 20 meter area as you move away from that wall between the 500s. So really we're using the 180s to fill in those gaps and that produces a significant cost saving on the solution. So just to quickly look at the DSX 500 and the specifications on that one. As I mentioned, the length is approximately five meters or 16 feet. We have a typical throw of 50 to 70 meters. SPL at 30 meters is 96 dBA. And the reason we measure it at 30 meters is these are long throw devices. And as we saw earlier, we can have a very even distribution of SPL. Um, bandwidth is 130 Hertz to 18 kilohertz. We have this wide horizontal dispersion that I talked about of 130 degrees. And then we have a very narrow vertical dispersion, thanks to our DDS beam shaping technology. And this is really driving good speech intelligibility because we're maximizing the direct to reverberant ratio. So moving on to a couple more practical things, you know, we have onboard DSP and amplification on the IntelliVox, which means you've also got onboard volume control, delay, an eight band parametric presets, and built-in surveillance as well. Um, so we can do, so IntelliVox fully monitors itself and also the input signal if you, if you um, send a pilot tone to it. It's worth mentioning that IntelliVox are really slim and unobtrusive and we actually score really well with architects here. Um, they do like IntelliVox. And if you engage high and early with um, architects in the project, then we can get solutions not only sound great, but look great as well. In terms of colors, then IntelliVox is white as standard, but there are custom rank RAL colors available. So moving on, I mentioned there that, you know, we have these IntelliVox 180s, the 1.8 meter raises infills. So these are fill speakers and they will be EQ'd and delayed appropriately. So on the bottom row um, where we had the 500s, these are really, you know, filling in that zero to 15 to 20 meters area. And on the row to the top of the screen, they're actually acting as infills behind the check-in desk because the check-in desk will cause shadowing and obstructions there. In terms of specifications, then horizontal um, opening angle on the 180 is the same. So is the bandwidth 
as are the feet other features and beam shaping technology. I guess the important differences are that we now have a 1.8 meter length, approximately six foot, and a typical throw of 15 to 25 meters. An SBL at 30 meters is around 89 dB. So, in this example, we do have this delayed row, as you see towards the top of the screen, which are D1, D2, D3, and D4 here, um, that are providing infill behind the check-in desks. So, now you need to consider delays. Not something you often consider when dealing with you know, time zero systems, if you like, ceiling speaker systems, et cetera. With our long throw, longer throw solutions like CBT and Televox, then it is important that you do consider the effects of delay. In this example, then there's approximately 35 meters between the loudspeakers at the bottom of the screen here, so the A1, B1, B2, et cetera, and the ones behind the check-in desk, D2, D3, D4. So we do need to apply the appropriate delay to time align the system. Uh, this is really easy to do with the Intellibox because it does have the built-in DSP, and we can actually implement the delay um, from within the wind control software and that will happen on board on the Intellibox. However, if you're using passive units here, you know, you could have chosen to use um, some of our Control 20 surface mounts, for example, or CVTs, then if you're driving those units with, you know, conventional amplification, then you need to ensure that your signal change and what, that the signal chain and wiring are done in such a way that you can delay those units appropriately. Um, this wasn't in the model, but I just thought I'd add it as well, just to add a bit more context to this. Sometimes you might see, you know, a low ceiling area with a couple of loudspeakers, you know, just before you get to the security area, for example. The ceiling height may lower, and you might need some ceiling speakers just to fill in there. If you do have that situation, then again, you do need to consider the delays and delay that group of loudspeakers. Okay, so back to our large check-in hall. Um, and the direct SPL. So here we're showing the direct SPL with male speech, and we're looking at an average SPL of around 82 and a half um, dB, with a, a deviation of around two and a half dB across the space. This is a 2D plot. Um, we can also generate 3D plots. So the SPL plot here is actually from DDA, and then it's actually been dropped into the, um, to the SketchUp model. So you can blend the uh, sketch rendering in SketchUp with the output from DDA. Um, you don't have to do that. You can actually look at the results in 3D and DDA as well. So it's, DDA is a really nice tool for, for working with this type of um, environment. Again, you're going to need to calculate the STI for this solution. Um, and you can calculate this in DDA, as I mentioned before. Um, and again, these values are only specific for this example project. And don't forget, every project is unique. Right, so next up, let's look at an external area. Um, so outside the airport, we've got a curbside area, you know, cars are pulling up, dropping people off, shuttle buses, etc. cetera. Um, so obviously this is outdoor. So we want to think about using some of the products from um, the range of IP rated loudspeakers from JBL. So for those of you who are lucky enough to visit the Harman booth at ISE in Amsterdam this year, then you would have seen our tropical rainforest that we had, complete with rain and IP rated products from JBL. Some of the products that were featured there included the Control Contractor 20 series of surface mount loudspeakers that you see here on the left. Um, and these units are IP44 as standard and IP55 when purchased with the optional Weathermax grill and MTC panel cover. Also featured were the all-weather compact range, which are IP56 as standard. So for our project, we've actually chosen the AWC82. Um, you can see here from the arrow pointing at the loudspeaker that they're mounted uh, here, just on the outside of the building, firing out towards the road. And just to give you a couple of uh, the specifications of this unit. The AWC82 has an 8-inch woofer with a Kevlar reinforced cone. You know, again, um, you know, emphasizing its uh, credentials for outdoor use. We have a 1-inch exit compression driver, a consistent 120-degree by 120-degree uh, dispersion pattern. 
frequency response is from 80 hertz to 20 kilohertz, has a high sensitivity of 94 dB, and a rated max SPL of 118 dB at one meter. Again, like many of the products that we've seen here today, this one ha can operate either as an eight ohm device or as a high impedance device, high impedance device on a 70 or 100 volt line system. And there are various taps available um, for those high impedance solutions. The unit is highly weather resistant with an IP56 rating and is available in black or gray uh, in this occasion rather than white. So here's an SPL plot. Um, for, again, this is an output from DDA. So this is direct sound, direct SPL, uh, A-weighted with um, a pink noise input spectrum. So what you can see here is we're achieving you know, around 90 dB on average with a 10 dB headroom. Obviously the target SPL uh, that you're looking to design for here is gonna be at, you know, around 12 to 15 dB above the background noise level to get a good signal to noise ratio. Um, it's worth mentioning that although we have um, Although we have our AWCs uh, mounted here on the building firing to the road, you know, there are also plenty of examples around the world, Melbourne Airport being one of them, where you'll see um, AWCs mounted on the lampposts, um, actually firing downwards onto the uh, curbside areas, covering a much larger area of um, pickup, drop off, um, shuttle bus stops, et cetera. So I think that covers kind of the curbside and outdoor solutions. Um, so let's look at some other areas uh, where you might you know, need to design a loudspeaker system for. So one of them could be a retail outlet area in a departures, uh, lounge, a departures area. So your air side at this point. So here, you know, it might be highly populated with the various different retail, retail outlets and, um, and restaurants. Um, so there's lots of obstructions, et cetera. You may have also have a more industrial or a higher ceiling, which makes using ceiling speakers not possible. So the Control 60 series of pendant loudspeakers could be, you know, could be a, one of the choices here. Equally, you could think about using Control 20 surface mount um, as a distributed system mounted on the facades of the retail outlets. So there's a, you know, a couple of ways of approaching this. You know, something like the CBT50 could also be used here. Um, while we're talking about the Control 20 series, then it's also worth mentioning that these would be a really great solution um, for using actually inside the retail stores and restaurants um, to provide really nice sound coverage in there, both for public address announcements and for music as well. So let's just highlight one of the products from the Control 60 series of pendant loudspeakers. The unit you see here is the Control 67. In terms of components, it has a six and a half inch low frequency drivers, driver and a silk dome treater. And it features the radiation boundary integrator that we saw earlier on the Control 47 LP. So it's gonna give us that nice consistent um, coverage. In terms of frequency response, it goes from 58 Hertz to 18 kilohertz, and it has 120 degree conical coverage. It has a high 90 dB sensitivity which means we can get a rated maximum SPL of around 109 dB at one meter. Again, you can run this either in low or high impedance mode, um, and there are a variety of taps available for both 70 and 100 volt line. Like many other products, it is available in white or black. So just to give you an example uh, of a project where these units have been used, uh, this is actually a really large airport that was completed recently in the Middle East, where Control, 67, Control 67s were used to cover the pier and gate areas. This installation also has more than 50 IntelliVox units in the check-in and duty-free areas. And in total, there's over 300 Control 67 pendant loudspeakers on the pier and gates. Hopefully you can see the Control 67s in the image here on your left. Just in case you're having a bit of difficulty spotting them, um, I will highlight some of them now with some little orange circles. So hopefully you can see the loudspeakers there. You know, when they're not highlighted, you know, they, they blend very well into the architecture of the space. I haven't actually highlighted all the loudspeakers, um, but the, yeah, that just gives you an idea of, of where they are. So yeah, again, 
that's with them unhighlighted, that's with them highlighted. So yeah, it was a really effective solution for this space. So just to wrap up on, on the loudspeaker solutions, um, there are a variety of commercial loudspeaker solutions available from JBL, uh, as well as the ones that we've described here today. And you know, many of them could also be appropriate um, for airports. We did talk about the CBT briefly early in the presentation. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to do a full example with CBT, um, but it'd be nice to do. And I wanted to just emphasize that the CBT are a really important part of our portfolio for airports. And a really great tool for sound system designers. Um, so yeah, so please consider CBT when you're designing systems. Um, maybe not an obvious one for airports is the Control 88. Um, it's a coaxial mushroom landscape speaker. So this is an in-ground loudspeaker. And you might ask, well, why would you want to use that in an airport? Um, so I've actually had some conversations with people recently where they have some walkways going from um, the terminal to, to parking areas where there aren't that many lampposts or post to mount loudspeakers. So they're wondering whether something like this could be a solution. Equally, you know, in some of these really large airport hubs, you actually see small gardens and forests appearing actually as part of the building now as well. Um, so that when passengers are transferring between flights and they've got a couple of hours to kill, there's a few different areas they can go to. So, you know, it could be, it could be something that you might be called upon to use. Um, the other loudspeaker is the Control HST loudspeaker. This is a really wide covering coverage loudspeaker with HST technology. I'd encourage you to, to check it out in more detail on the JBL website. So, you know, this could be used in some um, corridor areas, for example. Um, I certainly passed through a number of airports that have been extended recently. So where they've built um, some, some gates uh, as an addition to the original terminal building. And those extensions are relatively simple structures. So it's a steel frame with some, some kind of paneling um, on the sides and roof. So there is no ceiling as such. The ceiling height's probably too low to use a pendant speaker. You wouldn't get a good distribution. So HST could be a, a good solution in some of those areas. So it's worth looking at and worth considering. And finally is the um, CSS H30. This is a, a 30 watt paging horn. So you, know, you probably wouldn't want to use this you know, in your front house areas, your airside areas, for example, but it's something that you can consider using your back of house areas. So where you've actually got you know, areas that for airport employees only, um, then it could be a solution for delivering you know, messages into those areas at a, at a competitive, uh, for a competitive value. Okay, so I think we're, we're coming close to the hour and I wanna leave a bit of time for questions. So in summary then, just to recap on what we've talked about today, um, you know, first up, and it's not a point on here, every airport is unique. Um, so really treat it as such and treat your design as such. Um, JBL has a wide portfolio of products as you've seen. These products provide consultants and sound system designers with the tools to deliver clear and intangible messages. Whatever the architecture, acoustics, or size of the space, then the chances are JBL has a solution. The other thing I'd like to re-emphasize, you know, I mentioned it in the very first slide in the presentation, was our application engineers. And JBL's application engineers are available to provide detailed product information and advice. And they are located worldwide um, within our regional sales offices, and also many of our distributors and dealers worldwide have very experienced staff who you can call upon for additional information as well. So, you know, make use of those resources, reach out to people. And finally, you know, we looked at some of the range of design tools from JBL as we looked at our example today. So we looked at JBL's distributed system design software. We briefly looked at um, the CBT calculator at the beginning. And we also looked at DDA, which is the 3D prediction software that we use for both prediction and 3D visualization. So I think that just about wraps it up and we should have some time left for questions if there are any. So I'll hand over to Laura to um, pass those on. Yeah, we do have some questions. Um, the first one is asking, what would be a good speaker choice for addressing very humid outdoor areas of an airport? For example, somewhere like Dubai. So again, I think, you know, when we looked at those outdoor speakers earlier, um, the AWCs a good choice. And also something like, you know, we talked about the Control 20 series, but the Control um, 25 as well um, could work well, depending on the throw distance that you have there. 
Um, and like I say, when you use Weathermax grills with those units, then they they work very well in those types of environments. All right, the next question is asking, are there EN5424 versions of CBT outdoor and wall mount loudspeakers? So yeah, if you actually go on the JBL website and go to the installed section, um, I think on that page you'll see a list of the EM5424 solutions. So the, there is a, um, a EM5424 ver version of both the CBT50 and 100, um, and also the uh, Control25 um, is also available in the EM54 version, which is a surface mount. Okay, the next question is asking, is ease of back data available for the JBL range? There is ease data available for the majority of JBL products. I must admit, I am not that familiar with ease evac myself. I'm not sure if the other panelists are, but I presume it uses the same ease file. But yeah, if you want to, I can get back to you on that one if you want to contact us. Okay, um, the next question is asking, can active speakers like Intellivox be used on a BS5839 compliance system in the UK? Aha, great question. Um, so yeah, this is something I first dealt with, oh, going back to 99 when I first started working with Intellivox, um, when we did our first Intellivox install in a railway station in London. Um, so essentially the, the codes of practice and standards that exist don't cover this type of product. Um, but what we've done over the years is to introduce a whole range of features to Intellivox as part of the surveillance monitoring um, that basically means it complies to the spirit of the standards. Um, and we do have a lot of Intellivox used as part of PAVA systems around the world. So just to give you an idea, Intellivox, as well as the DSP, actually has a risk processor on board. So the risk processor is taking care of all the surveillance tasks. Um, failures can be reported by an onboard failure relay or you can actually connect uh, the wind control software for, um, for Intellivox over the network, and you can also uh, monitor and log faults on that. In terms of, um, in terms of failure, you know, if the DSP were to fail, we actually bypass the DSP and route the audio directly to the amplifiers, um, and we actually monitor the loads. So we're actually monitoring the load on each individual amplifier channel. We're monitoring the amplifiers, we're monitoring the DSP, and we can also, um, look for a pilot tone coming into the loudspeaker. So we can check that there is actually in integrity on the front end. So what's actually feeding the signal to the loudspeaker. So yeah, it, the short answer is yes. And we have done it on many occasions and it, feel free to reach out to me if you need any more specific information on that. Okay, the next question is asking if Intellivox systems support Dante? They do not at this time, no. Okay. Um, are the HST speakers included in the distributed system design application? Uh, I would have to defer to one of my colleagues on that. Rick, I don't believe they are, but could you, Rick Camlet's on the call, who's the product manager for these speakers. Rick, are you a- I'm sorry, which, which speakers? The HSTs, are they in the distributed? Um, uh, they, that, that's a good question. Uh, they're, they're not. Um, the distributed system design software is uh, exclusively for speakers that are, uh, you know, mounted on the ceiling, pointed pointed straight down, and uh, HSTs are not included. Okay, the next question is asking, what DSP are you using? Um, I presume this refers to Intellivox. Um, but it's actually a Texas Instruments um, processor in that device. Okay. Um, does DDA calculate SPL and STI assuming low Z loudspeaker, and do the high Z transformers have any impact on either SPL or STI? Um, so with DDA, it's actually working with the CLF file, so it's common loudspeaker format. Um, so you're not actually able to select uh, a specific tapping for the 100 volt systems. So yeah, you would need to do some, some calculation yourself when actually uh, setting the, the level in DDA to actually match the transformer tap that you're choosing. 
Okay, and then the next question is asking regarding Intellivox, what is the battery backup requirement on BS and EN54 operations? Okay, so um, we don't have a, a DC input, which would typically be associated with battery backup. Um, reason being is it would be difficult to locate the batteries close to an Intellivox a lot of the time. So more typically what we see is we're actually running the Intellivox um, on a UPS. So we've done this in a number of um, large railway stations around Europe and airports around the world as well. So yeah, typically uh, Intellivox would be on a UPS. Um, in the spec sheet, you know, we detail um, the power factor correction in a lot of detail and also give um, the idle consumption and the maximum consumption of the unit and also the consumption of the unit with a male shaped speech signal as well just to help with UPS sizing. Okay, the next question is asking if Harman has come up with a full airport PA VA solution. So in terms of our solutions for airports, our solution is very much focused around the JBL offering. Um, we do have um, some customers who take a, you know, our DSP uh, from BSS and our Crown DCI amplifiers, which are obviously a great choice to drive the uh, JBL loudspeakers. They take those products and they put them together with their um, paging solutions and automated flight announcement systems to create a, a full solution. But currently there is no, there's no paging solution or automated flight announcement solution from Harman No. Okay, it looks like that was the last question that came in. Um, so just a reminder, this webinar was recorded. So if you have anybody on your team that you wanted to pass this on to, it will be posted on our um, Harman Professional University YouTube channel within a few days. Nick, thank you so much for doing this presentation. We really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for attending. We appreciate your time. Um, if you're interested in learning about any of the other sessions that are coming up, please visit pro.harman.com. And um, we look forward to seeing you on future sessions. Thanks so much, everyone.